Hi everybody, I'm the Ember, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make this basic game in Godot. If you've never touched coding or ever made a game in your life, this video is just for you. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe, because in the next part I'll be going over how to add a nice looking tile set and an animated character. So with that said, let's just jump straight into it. So first, you want to open up any browser, then we're just going to type in Godot then download then you can see there's one for windows mac and linux so i'm just going to click windows because i'm on windows then i'm going to click this download go.engine button now you can see it's downloading up over here okay so once that's downloaded you want to unzip the zipped folder and then inside there there should be an exe file double click that and that will open the go.program now to make a new project we can click this button here or this button up here so I'll just click create new project. There is a few settings here, but first we're just gonna change the name. You can call it whatever you want. And then we can click this browse button for the file path. And that's basically it. Then we're just gonna click create and edit. Okay, so there is a bit happening here. We have lots of different panels and heaps of buttons. So this box over here is where you can locate your files and drag them in, basically like your file manager. So up here is basically the node tree where you can add new nodes and sort nodes around. Then over here is the properties of whatever node you have selected. And then we just have a few basic transform and view buttons up here. And then at the very top we have our scenes. Okay, so that's basically it. So I will have a link in the description where you can download the game assets. Or you can make your own if you want to do that. So once you've downloaded that, you'll have a folder called Assets, and in there there's just going to be a few really basic sprites, a white player, a spike, and a world block. So we can just drag and drop this folder into our project manager. And there you go, you can see we have that folder with all the objects in it. So at the moment you can see at the top we're in the 3D workspace, but we're making a 2D game so we want to be in the 2D workspace. So there we go. So the first thing we probably want to do is make a character. So I'm just going to go over here and click other node. Then you can type in character and there will be a node called character body 2D. Then we'll select that and click create. Now you can see over in our node tree we have a character body 2D node. But we do have a little warning here. So we can actually click on that and it will show us the warning. And it says this node has no shape so it can't collide or interact with other objects. And then it says, consider adding a collision shape 2D or a collision polygon 2D as a child to define its shape. Okay, so first of all, let's add a collision shape, like it said. And then you can see that has a warning as well, so we can click that. And it says, a shape must be provided for the collision shape 2D to function. Please create a shape to resource it. Okay, so we'll just click OK. Then we'll go over here to the node properties. You can see we have this shape property and it has an empty value. So we're just going to click on that empty value and make it a rectangle. So now if we zoom in you can see we actually have a blue rectangle. So this blue rectangle will be where we collide with the floor and spikes and enemies. Okay so now we need to add the player sprite or image. So I'll just click the character body and then create a new node by clicking this button here. Then type in sprite and you should come up with a sprite 2D node. Then we'll add that. So then you can see over in the inspector over here, we actually have a texture property, but you can see it's empty. So in our assets folder, we'll drop that down. You can just grab the player, click and drag, and drag our player into the texture box. And there you go, we actually have a player sprite now. Okay, we might want to make our collision shape a little bit smaller to fit our sprite. So that should be pretty good. Okay, so before we go any further, I'm just going to save this scene. So we can press Control S, then I'm going to create a new folder by clicking this button, and I'll call this Scenes. And then you can see we have a Scenes folder, so I'll double click to go into that, and I'll just call this Scene Player. Then we can click Save. So now we have a saved scene in our Scenes folder. And I'm also going to name the character body 2D to Player. So now I'm going to make a new scene and I'll make this a 2D scene node by clicking that button there. Okay, so now we want to make the scene where the player can run and jump around on. Click our node 2D and I'll call this main scene like that. 
Then we can control S and save this in the scenes folder again. And then I'll add a new node to that. And this will be a tile map. So double click the tile map. Basically what a tile map does is it allows you to draw different parts of your world onto the screen. So first of all, we're going to go over to the inspector and you can see this tile set button here and it's set to empty. So I'll click that and click new tile set. Okay, so you can see nothing's happened down here, but we do have this tile set option. So I'll click that and then it says no tile set source is selected. Select or create a tile set source. So I'll go to the assets and grab our world block and drag that into this dark gray area. Then it says the atlas's texture was modified. Would you like to automatically create tiles in the atlas? I'll click yes. Okay, so now if we go back to the tile map, zoom in, you can see we have a tile. Now if we select that, we can actually draw it around in our scene. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so now let's just put this in like that. I'm going to click this little link button and bring the player in. And I'll just move it to the top. Then I'll select the player, select our drag tool up here, and just drag it up. Then we can press this play button up here to run the game. So click that, and then I'll just do select current. So first of all, you see nothing really happens, and our screen is giant. You can see this is where we placed our blocks. So first of all, we need to zoom in. So with the player selected, I'll add a camera. You can see this purple box. That's basically what the camera is seeing. Okay. And then if I go over to the inspector, we have this zoom property. And I'll make that around about 3. Should be fine. Maybe 3.5. Yeah, should be good. So now if we press play again, you can see we're zoomed in, but nothing's happening. Okay, so now we're going to add some player logic to the player. So I'm going to go back to the player scene. With our player node selected, I'll click this little add script button. And I'll just name it player. And then I'll click the folder button, go up to the top where we have our assets and scenes folder and I'll create a new folder and call this scripts. Then we can just click open and create. And you can see we already have this default code. So basically what this is doing is it's setting a speed and a jump velocity. Then in our physics process, it's saying if we're not on the floor, add the gravity. And then it's saying if we press UI accept, which is spacebar, we're going to add the jump velocity to the player, making it move up. Then it's seeing if the player clicks the right or left arrow key, and then it's making it move in the right or left direction. So that's basically what this code is doing. So now if we save this, go back to our main scene, and click play. You can see our player just falls straight through the ground, and it just keeps falling forever. So I'll close this. So our player is not colliding with the floor because the floor has no collision. With the tile map selected, I'm going to go over to the inspector and then I'm going to select this tile set button here and that will give us a few more options. Then I'm going to click physics layers and add a new physics layer. Then I'm going to go back to our tile set. Tile set is basically where you edit the tiles and tile map is where you select them and draw them. So back to our tile set and I'm going to go to paint then paint properties, and I'm going to select the physics layer 0, the one we just created. Then you can see it has this default box with four points. And now I'm just going to click on our base tile. And you can see it adds a light blue um, collision shape to it. So now this should be right. So all we have to do is go up to the play button, click play, it should run. And there we go, our player is colliding. So now we can use the left and right arrow keys to move the player. And spacebar to jump. So this is basically our very basic game. Okay, so I'm going to close this. I want to give the camera a bit of drag. So when the player moves, the camera has to catch up to it a little bit. It makes it feel a bit more natural. So I'm going to select the camera, go over to drag, and enable horizontal and vertical drag. Now let's press play and see how it looks. Okay, so this is good, except it does feel a little bit... um very like fast and not smooth so to fix that we can click out of this and go to position smoothing then we can just enable that and click play now you can see it's super nice and smooth so i think it is a little bit too much smoothing so to fix that i'll just turn the speed up to somewhere around about 10 click play again yeah this is a lot better so we'll leave that this for the moment Actually, I might just make it 15. Okay, that should be fine. So 
So I'm just going to build up a little bit of a map. Okay, so I just built up a bit of a map. Now we can click play and have a look. Okay, so we can use the arrow keys, space bar to jump. It's good. The only thing is, the jump is very powerful. I only want the player to be able to jump basically two blocks high. But at the moment it can jump like five blocks high. Okay, so let's fix that. So I'm going to go back to the player scene. And then just go up to the script tab. And then we can just change this jump velocity value. So maybe I'll make it something like minus 200. Then we can click play again. That's a lot better. It might be a little bit too weak. So maybe minus 250. And then we can also change the speed. So I'll make the speed 200. Then we can click play again. There we go. We have our player that can run around and jump. So basically you can adjust these two values to have something that feels nice and responsive. So you go ahead and customize this to your liking. So I found minus 300 for the jump velocity and 200 for the speed works pretty good for my likings. So yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, so there is one annoying problem. If you fall off and you press jump a tiny second after you fall off, then you're not going to be able to jump. So it's actually really hard to get precise jumps. So to fix this, we're going to add something in called coyote time. Basically, it gives you a few extra seconds when you're off the block to jump. Okay, so up the top, I'm going to make a new constant called coyote time. And then I'll equal that to 0 0.2. And this number here is in seconds, so I'll just write a comment. Duration of coyote time in seconds. And then we need one more variable, so type in VAR. And this will just be coyote time counter. And we'll equal that to 0.0. .0. Okay, now I'm going to go down to our handle jump. And I'm going to go over a bit and type in for coyote time counter is less than coyote time. And then I'll put a bracket here and a bracket here. And up here, if is not on floor, I'm going to add coyote time counter plus equals delta. So delta is basically like time. So it's going to add on to our coyote time counter with time. And then we need some way to reset the timer. So I'm just going to write else and then set the coyote time counter back to zero. So let's just run down what I did here. So first of all, we added a new constant called coyote time and set that to 0 0.2. And if I set this to 1, that would be 1 second. So this is 0 0.2 seconds. And then we added a new variable called coyote time counter and made that 0, 0.0. And then if we're not touching the floor, we're going to plus the coyote timer plus the time. And if we are touching the floor, we're going to set the coyote timer back to 0. And then in our handle jump section, we're saying if we press spacebar, which is UI accept, and we are on the floor or the coyote timer is less than coyote time, then we're going to add velocity to our player and make us jump. So let's test this out. Looking good so far. Now let's test it if we go off. Yeah, we have a little bit of extra time to jump. Show that to you again. Okay, that's good. Okay, so now let's add a trail to the player. So with the player selected, I'll add a line 2D node. And I'll put that under the sprite 2D node. So it's a chart of it. And I'll just double click it and name it trail. Then I'll add a script just to the line 2D. So it has its separate script. And I'll save that to the scripts folder. And then just click create. And then we can actually get rid of this. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to add a point. So add point. And then we're going to get the parent. The parent is the sprite 2D. And then we're going to get the global position. And then if points.size is greater than 20, we're going to write remove, remove point zero. So something that's always good practice is to make any numbers that you might want to change later are variable. 
So at the top, I'll just write var trail len for length. I'll set that to 20. And then we can just write trail len in there. So now we just have an easier way of changing the um, trail length. Okay, so this does look a little bit complicated. So let me just break this down. So basically, this add point is adding a point to basically like a list. Then it's basically getting the new position of the sprite 2D. So when we move, it's getting the new position of it. Then it's adding another point in the new position. Then it's saying if there's more points than 20, remove point zero. Zero means it's basically just getting rid of the first point in the list of points. Like we set up here, it's adding a point to a list. And it's getting rid of the first point in a list. So if you didn't understand that, basically what it's doing is it's adding a new point to the new player's position. So when you move the player, it adds a new point. If that trail gets to a certain size, it's going to delete the points. So it says a certain size. Bit confusing, but let's just run this and see what it looks like. Okay, so it's kind of working, but it's looking really weird. So to fix this, we just go to visibility and enable top level. And then click play again. And there we go. We've got a working trail. It does look a bit ugly. So to fix that, I'm going to add a new width curve, new curve, and add a new point. Put this up to the top, add another point, and move it down to the bottom. So it's kind of like a Bezier curve. Then click play again. And there we go. We have a nice trail. I might also make the default color a bit darker and a bit less opacity and i'll make the trail length maybe 10 instead of 20. okay nice this is looking good except we can see it on top of the player so to fix this again i'm going to go down to ordering and turn the z index to minus one so basically that's just going to put it behind our player sprite click play again and there we go. That's looking good. If you want to, you can actually make it a bit thicker by changing this a width, maybe like 20. Okay, so 20 is too big. Maybe 18. Let's try that. Still a bit too big. Let's try 16. That's good. Okay. And we can make the trail length longer if we want to. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. We have a scene built out with a nice controllable player. Okay, so that's all for this video. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe because in the next part, I'll be going over how to add a nice looking tile set and an animated character. I hope you had fun making this and I'll see you in the next one.